This is another example of an ANOVA. This setup is the exact same as in the last example, so I'm not going to go over that. The only thing that has changed are some of the numbers and the treatment conditions, but again, we're going to be comparing three different treatments. Um, and this is our end product to get to the statistic, but we're going to have to fill out, uh, figure out what the various components are. And you can see what they are here. I've defined all the formulas. And again, each one has components that we need to figure out the mean squares for between and within. And those, of course, both require a sum of squares and the degrees of freedom. And so we have all the formulas here. I like to start at the top and see what I'm going to uh, need to get to, but then kind of work my way backwards. Um, I explained the uh, sum of squares within in the last video, the notation. So in this example, I'm not going to go through uh, the formulas as much. Uh, same thing with the SS total. The only thing I have added is this formula for a mean. So for every group, the mean is equivalent to the total for that group over the little n uh, or the sample size of that group. And HSD is the uh, post hoc test that you can run in this kind of an example when the sample sizes are all equal. That takes a number Q that you get from a diff some other table, a, a Q table, which we might see uh, in a bit, times the square root of the mean squares within over the sample size. So let's just go ahead and get started uh, right away. Our first step is always to state the null and alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3. That's to say that the uh, populations from where these samples come from are the same. There's no difference. And the alternative hypothesis is that um, at least one of them is different. At least one is different. So then the second thing we're going to do is drop a little sketch to give us a, more of an intuition of what we're doing here. And shade the tail. And I have to figure out what this cutoff value is. So where is the rejection region separated from the non-rejection region? So we're going to need to look that up in the table. And for that, we need the... Uh, alpha level, which is 0 0.05, the degrees of freedom between and the degrees of freedom within. And the formulas are, are back here. So again, the within is big N minus little k. Big N is given to us. It's the total number of uh, total number of sample size. Uh, so that's 18. We have 18 minus little k. Little k is the total number of treatments. So there's three of them. Uh, so that's 18 minus 3, which is 15. And the degrees of freedom between is little k minus 1. Little k, again, the number of treatments, that's 3 minus 1. So our degrees of freedom is 2. And degrees of freedom total is big N, which is 18 minus 1. So that's 17. And all the degrees of freedom between and within should add up to the degrees of freedom total. So our degrees of freedom within was 15 and our degrees of freedom between was 2. So now we can actually look at the uh, table for the critical values for the F distribution, the one for the alpha level 0.05. We're going to identify across the top row the degrees of freedom between, which was 2. So we're on the second column here. We're going to scroll down until we get to the degrees of freedom within on the sidebar. So that, that was 15, right? So the, we get 3.682 as our cutoff score, our cutoff value here. Uh, so now we can actually start calculating the statistic and we're going to start with the sum of squares total and these numbers are given to us so we're just going to be plugging in so we're going to do sum of squares total equals 
the sum of the x squares, which was 411, minus the a fraction g squared over big N. And we have those two numbers here as well. So we have a fraction 54 squared over 18. I'm going to punch this in the calculator. I'm getting 249. Uh, so now we're going to do the sum of squares within. I explained that this just the formula simply means that we're adding the sum of squares for each group. And we can get that here from the table. So let's do sum of squares within. So that's 60 plus 65 plus 40. 60 plus 65 plus 40 gives us 165. Now we're going to do the sum of squares between. And that was a simple one as well because uh, that was just taking the difference between the sum of squares total and the sum of squares within. So we have 249 minus 165. So we get 84. Um, so now we've done all the heavy lifting. Now we just got to find these ratios. We have all the components now for the mean squares. And when we find those two different ones, we can make the uh, final uh, computation, the final ratio. So let's do mean squares within here. Mean squares within, that's sum of squares within over degrees of freedom within. So that is 165 over 15. So we get 11 and then we'll do the mean squares between and that's sum of squares between over degrees of freedom between so we get 84 over 2 so that's 42 so now we can do our final f statistic that's ms between over ms within so that is 42 over 11 and we get 3.8181, so 3.82. So now we can compare this to our rejection region. You can see that we do have a value that's greater than 3.682. It's in the uh, shaded rejection region. Not far into it, but it does uh, count. So we have, maybe it's like right here somewhere. That's F equals, that's an F. 3.82, so that's that right here. So uh, the last thing we do is that we're going to make a decision. So we're gonna reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is a significant difference with at least one of the means in there. So now we're gonna make use of those tests over here and figure out which ones. So in order to do that, we need to figure out the means for each group. And that's very simple. We already have uh, the information here. So for the first group, we have six over six is one. So our first mean is one. Uh, our second mean is 12 over six is two. And our third mean is 36 over six is six. So now we gotta find the differences between these. So let's do M2 minus M1. Uh, M6 minus M2. And then M, oops, M3, I mean, not M6, M3. M3 minus M1. 
So we're gonna figure out the differences between these means. So let's do two minus one, the second one minus the first one, that's two minus one equals one. Then we have, uh, that should say three. It's hard to read. So the third mean minus the second mean, six minus two, that's four. And then we have the third mean minus the first mean, six minus one equals five. So now we have to find this HSD value and then uh, compare these to that value. So if any one of these is bigger than that value, then we know that there's a significant difference between those specific means. Okay, so let's uh, start plugging some of these numbers in. Our Q value is going to be taken from the um, critical values of studentized range distribution. And we have one here for alpha 0.05. So we need the number of treatments at the top. And then on the left, we have the uh, denominator or the within um, degrees of freedom. So we had three treatments. So we're going to do three, which is the first column here, and then all the way down to where we get to 15. So we have 3.673. We have, we're going to multiply. 3.673 times our mean square within over n. So our mean square within was 11. So we have 11 over little n, which was 6. So now we just got to multiply these two numbers. Okay, let's go to our calculator. Uh, 3.673 times, and then I gotta do the square root of 11 over six. So I'm getting 4.9732, um, so 4.97. So 4.97. So we do see that there is, one of these combinations was greater than that. So that was the uh, the third mean minus the first one. The third mean minus the first one had was five, so that's greater than four point nine seven. So this is where we're actually get, finding the uh, the significances between these two.